my kids have been waiting for me to make my huge cast iron chicken pot pie. One of my family's all time favorite meal that I make is my homemade chicken pot pie that I make in my huge 17 inch cast iron pan. And this time I'm not gonna be using pre-made crust, I am making my own. My family has been waiting and waiting for me to make chicken pot pie. Every time I ask them what they want, Haley and Robert say chicken pot pie like every day. I said, I can't make chicken pot pie every single day. And uh, so Haley came over, she goes, what are you making, mom? I said, chicken pot pie. She's like, yes. And so she is making sure that she comes over for dinner tonight because this is her favorite, her, her and Robert, favorite. Then when I told my husband I was making, he's like, what? And he said to make sure I tell you guys that he went to get Josh and he pick, he's picking up Big B Coffee for me, Izzy and Noah. So I could get going on the chicken pot pie. So I told him, I will make sure to put that in the video so my honey is on his way to town to get Josh from work so I can start the chicken pot pie. So I already washed the celery. Now it's time to get this prepared. I like to actually do my celery to where it's a little thinner because I feel like when you cut your veggies a little smaller, um, they cook faster and my husband, the one thing that is a pet peeve of his is when I don't get the carrots completely cooked through. And for some reason, I never get the carrots completely cooked through. So I like to make things a little smaller. Um, my family loves chicken pot pie. I learned, I taught myself how to make a roux and I make that roux with everything. It's, it's the base for everything. Like a roux can be used in so many things, macaroni and cheese, um, of course, chicken pot pie, any cream based soups. And so I just sliced each of my celery down the center and now I'm just gonna cut them and we're gonna slowly add them to my pan. So in my pan here, um, I like to saute my veggies before I add everything together. So I'm gonna saute the veggies and then I think I'm gonna remove them and then do the chicken. I like to do the chicken with some herbs and stuff too. Actually, you know what I think I'm gonna do is I think we're gonna make our own homemade stock. So I'm gonna get a pan. I'm gonna put the chicken breast in a pan with a half a thing of water and we'll get that after I get this celery done I think we're gonna switch over to that well let's get the veggies on first because the chicken doesn't take long once you boil it into the pan and so I'm gonna put it in the pan and I am going to add um, I have fresh parsley and I'm gonna add some like Italian seasoning oregano things like that and so we're gonna actually make our own chicken broth which I will use in the roux so my roux calls for heavy cream um, I used to do whole milk quite a bit but um, I like the heavy cream instead. I, I never really use heavy cream. It is kind of more expensive. So, you know, if you're looking at cost, you're gonna wanna use maybe even half and half. But I started using um, heavy cream when I was doing keto. And I used to be a girl that, man, I was a sugar girl in my coffee. The sugary, the better. And then when I did keto, you only were allowed heavy cream in your coffee. And so now I'm just used to heavy cream and I'm not used to the the sugar so i can't do any coffees with sweeteners even if they're sugar free i can't do it um so that's one of the reasons i do heavy cream and so i started using heavy cream into my roux and then i would make my own stock to also make the roux but th well this is our veggies one but when we do do when we do do when we do 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 the roux um we're gonna use the stock from the chicken so i have my celery cut up i'm gonna add that to the pan and i think we are gonna take a break for a second and go and get the stock going because um, I have an hour and a half. So to cook this I meal. bought some fresh parsley, chopped that up. So I have my my pan, my my chicken breast. It's five pounds of chicken breast. It's a half a pot of water. So I have garlic, minced onion, bay leaves. I also did Italian seasoning because Italian seasoning has every kind of herb in it. It has oregano, marjoram, thyme, basil, rosemary, and sage. So it has pretty much everything that you would need to make your stock plus my fresh parsley. So we're gonna add it to the pot. I'm gonna simmer it on low probably for about maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It's, it's not gonna take long. And then we'll remove the chicken. Um, I usually, I, I in the past I've shredded it, but I don't really like it shredded because I feel like it gets too stringy. So I'm actually gonna take it out of the pot and cool it and I'm gonna put it into chunks. I think that's gonna be way, bay, bay weather. It's gonna be bay weather for our chicken pot pie. I cannot talk today. I cannot talk to this. It's gonna be way better than I think the shredded. I think if the shredded is too long, I don't know. I just I just wanna eat it and not have to like, what in the world? Um, 
And so we recently, me and the kids went to Fleet Farm. I got all my seeds for my garden. I am so excited. I, I told my husband I would like him to move my greenhouse over to my backyard. And I don't know if I've already told you guys this, but if not, and if I have, I'm just gonna repeat it. I'm gonna have him literally like plow my whole backyard and make my whole backyard a garden. I wanna do so many, so much canning. We've been eating so many canned goods. I wanna try different recipes and I have every herb possible. I want to use those boxes that my son, um, Josh gave me. I wanna plant the herbs in them and have my own herbs all year. Um, so I've been looking into like little mini greenhouses, little lights that you can kind of grow your herbs and in the winter to help them, you know, keep getting thicker. So I have like big plans for my garden this summer. I have big plans for my herbs. So we are going to add everything to the pot, get it going, and then we're gonna go back to the veggies. So I just stuck the, the celery into a bowl and I have my butter ready and then we'll do it. I did save a little bit of parsley to add to my veggies because I thought that'd be really good with the sauteed, like the onions, the carrots, the celery. Um, sometimes I'll add peas to my um, chicken pot pie. I'm not sure about the peas. Um, I had like a cup of frozen peas, but I did get peas, like the seeds because I wanna do the snap peas that you eat the whole pod or you take out the peas and can them or freeze them. I wanna freeze them. I got corn, I got, I mean, I have so many things. Gene's like, mom, make sure you get this and this because Gene's like, I wanna do a big garden this year. I'm like, okay, done, you know, done. Um, so yeah, so let's get this going and then we can get back to our veggies. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add the fresh parsley. It smells so good. And then I'm gonna be doing two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. I use this a lot like a lot and then a tablespoon of minced onion they're just kind of a, they're dehydrated onion they just have so much flavor all right and then i'm going to add three bay leaves One, two three and then two tablespoons of garlic i'm going to simmer this on medium heat probably for about 30 minutes all right that looks amazing Let me get a my spoon here all right, beautiful. Gonna turn this on and we are gonna get back to the veggies. All right, so I have my carrots all washed up. I'm gonna take the tops off. I have a dozen carrots. I want about four cups of chopped carrots. So we will see if this actually gives us four cups. All right, I usually buy carrots by the gigantic bag because we go through them so much. So I'm actually gonna cut them a little smaller because carrots do take a little longer to cook compared to like the onions and the celery. So if they're really big, I just like to make a line down in them. If they're super big, I'll do like a crisscross so I won't cut all the way through. And so that's what I'm gonna do with all of them. And I love, love canning carrots. Oh my goodness. You can freeze carrots or can them. I do like to do both. If you, um. If you can your carrots, they will, they won't be as like crisp as if you freeze them. And so canned carrots are really good for uh, adding to soups. Um, if you're gonna do like maybe a little bit of frying, but if you want to um, like add them to things like this, you know, other than soups, I would suggest freezing them. You just blanch them, it's so easy. And they stay really nice. I honestly feel like um, peas, carrots and corn. I feel like all of those, oh, here we go. That one went through. I feel like all of those are better frozen. I have tried freezing um, beans. I just feel like they're really rubbery. So I like to can my beans and I like to do, they have a different, a couple different kinds of green beans. There are some that are like flat. I don't like them. I find them extra stringy and I just don't feel like they can very well. So I like to stick with the traditional green bean when I do mine. Okay, looks like I'm all cut here. Bring my bowl over and let's get cutting these carrots. There we go. All right. So we're just gonna cut it, try and cut them as, you know, you don't want them super thin to where when they, they cook, they break down, but you don't want them super thick because you want them to cook at the same, um, the same speed, I guess, as your, um, as your celery and as your onions. So don't do them too big. Plus, I don't know about you guys, but when I eat carrots, I like them kind of cut in half. I don't know, I'm kind of weird about some stuff, but all right, so we're gonna just get these cut up see how many we get. I'm kind of guesstimating. So that was like three carrots and I'm not even at a, a cup. So I think I probably guessed right. 
Um, we recently just had a snowstorm and we got, well, we were supposed to get two feet and I honestly didn't think we got the two feet, but my husband said we did. He said because it was blowing so much that it kind of like landed and then kind of blew away because there are parts that are super like thick, like walking through the yard. Oh my goodness. Like I was getting snow into my shoes, into my boots, my barn boots. Um, but today it's really nice. The kids were off of school today because after it snowed, it rained and it's been so chilly that the roads were kind of a mess. Like they're kind of slushy and then parts of them were kind of like slippery. And so they just chose to have the kids stay home from school. At least for us, they chose to have the kids stay home from school for their safety. Cause we all know kids, right? They um, kind of crazy a little bit. So we had the kids home today and um, Izzy and my husband got the barn all cleaned up because I know, like I mentioned before, we have a, a, a horse. A little baby horse being born. Izzy, when is Darian due? Or Daisy Duke? Like within a week, within... Okay, so she's due within a week and a half. And so we have cameras set up. I just dropped something here. We have cameras set up and then um, we got the stalls all cleaned. And we have her, like I had showed you guys in the video um, of our... Our... Uh, our day in the blizzard. Um, I went over and seen him. I actually thought that she was wingman because she's so big. And then I realized wingman was on the end. Um, so yeah, so we, so they got that cleaned up today. And Noah has been like so busy in his bedroom cleaning it up. Gideon comes home in another three weeks. Um, and so we're trying to get the organized up there, trying to go through. I've really been in this mood where I'm just like tired of like stuff everywhere. And so I've been really just just trying to go through everything. I've been going through my cabinets and my kitchen, the pantry, my bedroom, my closet, just trying to like, I feel like I need to, like I want to be a minimalist. Like I want as least possible. So everything around me is just like, and so I've been so working so hard to just get things all cleaned up and ready for the summer. All right, there we go. Okay, so I have four left. So I might be a little off. So it looks like no, I might be okay. So this is like a four cup. And so I might be a little over. So I still have four carrots left. And so I've done eight. So I guess eight to 10 would be your uh, would be your amount. So I'm just gonna finish these carrots and next up is the onions. I actually waited to do the onions till last. Man, my eyes, because I have this like sinus thing going on, smells have really been getting to me. And Izzy's like, you can smell the onions. I'm like, yeah. She's like, wow, they must be potent because I've been kind of stuffed up for days. And so I always save the onions for last. It just, you know, I have glasses on too. So you would think the fumes wouldn't go into my, my eyes, but they do not. People have said to do like to hold a washcloth in your mouth or a piece of bread. I've tried goggles. I've tried a mask. It don't matter. It don't matter. Onions are crazy. All right, let's finish up on this. And next up is those... So I got all the vegetables chopped up. So it the, the 12 carrots were a little more over four cups. So I'd say the 12 carrots is probably six cups. Um, I got about four cups of celery and then about a quarter cup of my parsley. And then the onions, I'd say these this is probably about three cups. But you know, I cook big because I have a big family plus then some. So I have a stick of butter in my pan. I have garlic, white pepper, garlic salt, minced onion, Italian seasoning. So we're gonna add all that into the pan, get that sauteing and then while that is going, we're gonna start the crust, and the crust is super easy, it's like four ingredients. So we're gonna get the crust um, going after this, get it into the pan, make the roux, get the chicken finished, and then put it all together and then bake it. So with the crust, um, there's a couple different ways you can make it. You can do a shortening of butter where it is um, it has a really nice flavor, but it's flaky, or you can do just butter, which has a nice flavor, but I want to do the flaky too. So I'm gonna use shortening, and I'm gonna use butter. And so this recipe I have, um, it also has a little sugar in it if you're gonna make a pie. So if you're gonna make like an apple pie, you'll add the sugar, but because I'm making um, a, a chicken pot pie, I don't wanna have the sugar into it. So now we're gonna add all of these to our pot, get them sauteing, and then get the crust going. All right, so first up is the onions. I love these bowls. These are Rachel Ray bowls. They come in five colors. And they're really like sturdy. I drop them all the time, haven't broken yet. And then the celery, the carrots, 
And then the fresh parsley. All right. And then I'm gonna do a tablespoon of garlic salt. So if you're a smaller family, you're probably gonna wanna half this recipe. Okay. And then a tablespoon of white pepper. I tend to use white pepper more when I make my chicken dishes and then when I do more meat dishes, that's when I use my black pepper or soups, depending on the soup I make. And we're gonna do two tablespoons of the minced onion. And then a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. There we go. And then two tablespoons of garlic. I love garlic. I cook with garlic all the time. All right, okay, that looks great. We're just gonna get these cooking up here with the butter. You can also add a little bit of oil if you want to it. If you wanna add a little bit of avocado oil or maybe some more butter, you can. All right, that looks great. The veggies are looking good. The chicken's looking good. Now we're gonna make the crust. So this is just gonna be the lower crust. I had to double my recipe because I'm using my 17 inch cast iron pan. So I'm gonna have to do this twice. And so um, the recipe is two, I wrote it down here, two and, a, and one half cups of flour, um, a half a cup of shortening, a half a cup of cubed cold butter, a half a teaspoon of salt, and then it's gonna be a half a cup of ice, ice water, which is a quarter cup is three tablespoons. So we're gonna add everything into my food processor and then you're going to crumble it all up. We're gonna put everything in but the water. We're gonna pulse it till it's nice and crumbly. It starts to form a little bit of balls, like, like pea-sized um, dough. Then we're gonna add the water directly through the top. And then it, once it gets into like bigger clumps, we're gonna take it out, roll it out, put it onto my cast iron pan and then get it ready to go to add all the ingredients to it. So, um, and then I was thinking too with my roux, you can make a roux, it's just a cup of flour, a stick of butter, salt and pepper, and you just whisk it till it's thick and add cream. I think I'm gonna sprinkle the flour over my veggies and make the roux that way. So sprinkle the flour, because it has all the, the butters in it. It has even more moisture from the veggies. It also has salt and pepper and other spices. And I've done that before with my sausage gravy and it turned out fine. So I'm just gonna try it and see. We'll see what happens. And then I'll add my cream and then my homemade chicken broth to that. So let's get everything together inside of my um, food processor, which I I haven't really used a lot, but lately, because I've been trying to make more homemade stuff, like crusts and things like that, my food processor is now gold. Like this is like the number one appliance for me. All right, so we're gonna combine everything but the water into the food processor. So the flours first. And then the salt, and I will have um, the directions in my in my in the description, and then the shortening. If you want to use just butter, go ahead and use just butter, just butter, and then the cold cubed butter. All right, Let's put the top on it. We're gonna pulse it. And you wanna do that until you start to see a little bit of pea-sized clumps. I'm gonna take it off and just make sure it's all mixed in here. There we go. All right. All right we wanna make sure we get everything in here, so. Boys. <laughs> Quiet. Quiet on the set. All right, that looks good. Now we're going to add six tablespoons of ice water. Do that ice. Three, four, five. Six. All right. Let's do it again here. Ooh, that yeah, looks great. See how it's starting to do the clumps? There we go. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. All right, let's feel it. Let's just see. Ooh, nice. Ooh, that's
that's really nice. Okay, let me get area cleaned up. We're gonna roll this out and then put it on the counter in a flower surface and then get the crust made. This turned out so beautiful, you guys. Oh my goodness. I took my veggies off because they were starting to get a little overdone. And it was a little more pliable than I wanted. So I did put a little bit more flour in it just to kind of keep it together. So I think next time when I do my second batch, I'm only gonna do five tablespoons of water. All right. Kind of reminds me of sugar cookies. Ah, crazy. Hopefully this um, is gonna be big enough. I don't think it's gonna be big enough. I think I might need to do, I think I might need to do two of these maybe for my bottom. So I had to do another one because there wasn't enough dough when I started to roll this out. Um, it wasn't gonna be big enough for my cast iron pan because I wanted to drape over the sides. So I did another one and for this one, my butter was a little colder. So you do want the butter colder so it's not so like sticky and, and like not melted, but almost like a, a, sh a pressed cookie. You don't want that texture, you want more of a crust. And so I do have two and I'm gonna put these puppies together and roll them out. I'm just gonna mix them here. Get a little flour in them here. So yeah, make sure that the, the water is ice cold. Make sure that your flour also, or your, <laughs> your butter is cold. Now, a lot of these, they actually will chill them. Um, some, I saw some recipes, they chill them for like an hour, some for 30 minutes. And I just, I wanna get this going. So I, uh, we'll see, we'll see. I, I guess I could recommend that you chill it for 30 minutes. That might help your dough kind of stay better together. Um, but this does feel a little stiffer than the first batch, so I think I'm gonna be okay. I got some more butter on the counter because I'm gonna have to quadruple it. So the recipe I gave you is wasn't doubled. It was for one recipe. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm all messed up. I've had a rough week. I haven't felt too good. So the recipe I gave you will make you either one pie with a top and a bottom or two shells. So you'll have to double that then if you want it bigger. The chicken is done. The broth looks amazing. The veggies are done. All right. So let me just get this going here. Okay. All right. Okay. My husband made me this rolling pin years ago when we first got married. It's off one of the trees in our property. Um, well, it's not in our property anymore, but it was from one of the trees that we cut down when we built our house. So this is very nice. It is very pliable, it's soft. Um, hopefully it stays together on me. If it doesn't, I would know that I would should put it in the fridge for, or, or chilled it for 30 minutes. It looks pretty good though. You don't want it too thick. Okay. I had to take my sweatshirt off and open my window because I am dying. I got, Tons of burners going. All right, I'm gonna keep going on this. I wanna get it big enough to put in the bottom of my cast iron pan. All right. All right, so I end up making a dough. It I rolled it out, but it wasn't like it was sticking. It wasn't like pliable to where I could fold it and put it in my pan. So I did chill it and I did try doing just putting frozen butter in there and um, it was the same, it didn't matter with the ice cold, so I you do need to chill it, so it's in the freezer right now chilling. Um, I pulled out my veggies, I think I'm just gonna make my roux like normal, and then look at this, you guys. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, like absolutely beautiful. So I pulled my chicken out, and um, I know everybody's gonna say, well just take a hand mixer and shred it. So I want it chunky, like I want it chunky, I don't want it shredded. So I'm just uh, grabbing my tongs and my knife, and gonna cut these into chunks, and that way when my roux is done, I'll add my vegetables back into it. I'll add my chicken into it and then we'll put it into the crust once the crust is rolled out. So, and I did have to um, quadruple my recipe because, but you can't quadruple it all at once because your food processor won't hold it all. So I had to make four batches of my crust because um, when I rolled out the two crusts together, um, they were big enough. So I had to do another two. So I have all four of them in the freezer. 
and then the one um i'll pull out here in a second and we'll get it going but um yeah i mean it's trial and error right like i'm not you know i'm not like a professional cook i'm learning just like you guys and and trying to you know figure out how to do more you know i think i'm gonna get a fork hold on a second it's going to be way easier. You know, I'm trying out these new homemade recipes and I'm really excited about it. And you know, you're going to cook and everything. It's not always going to work out great. And that's okay. You just do what you can and you make it the best you can. And if you don't succeed, you try again. Just like when I made my cookies. Um, I think I tried to change them up a little bit or I, or I used a really weird uh, recipe. And I made my chocolate chip cookies on live and they went flat absolutely flat and I'm like oh my so um yeah and so I was like determined absolutely determined to not give up and so right there on live I whipped out another batch man I was tired I was hot and but I was determined to show you guys that I can do it <laughs> even though I've made those cookies over and over and over again I was determined to figure it out and so they turned out great and you know, my kids even liked the batches that were spread out. They liked those too, but I wasn't happy with them. I guess we're, we're, we're our worst critic, right? Because we have big, huge standards. And when we don't meet those, we get more upset than the people that we're taking care of or cooking for or whatever. Um, so yeah, so I'm hoping that this crust works out. <laughs> but uh, I got it all in the freezer. Wow, this is really nice. This is like falling apart. Like I might not even need to cut it. I might be able to just to take a fork and kind of shred it. It's really nice. This is that five pound bag of chicken my husband wanted me to get. I usually just get the tenderloins because they're so little and you cook them and you just slice them. Well, with these big old huge honking breasts here I got, it's a little more difficult to uh, maneuver them. And I, wow, it's beautiful. I really like easy. I like it easy. I do. I am. I, I'm. I'm a. I'm a cook. Let's get her done, the easiest way possible. My husband's so funny because he'll like. He'll know when I spent a lot of effort into um, a recipe, and he'll know if I didn't. Because <laughs> sometimes I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. What can I say? Okay, I'm just gonna keep finishing this up, and then we're gonna get the roux going. Gonna get. Yes, son. Um. And then I'm going to get, uh, hold on, my, my son needs me, so we're going to make a quick pause. And So I cut up the chicken. Cut, I got my veggies in a bowl here. Um, I still have my crust into the freezer to harden. Um, I just pray those crusts work. And I wonder if it might be the shortening. So if you want to try doing the crust, we'll see though. I mean, I hate to tell you to, to change it up, but if you want to just do the, just do butter, and maybe, and you know what too though, I think you could actually mix the water. I don't really think you're going to need much of the water. So maybe try seeing what your dough's like before you add the water. And then if you feel like maybe it needs a little bit of the moisture, then maybe add it. But I'm kind of thinking it might be the water that might be making it super soft. So I have both of those in the freezer. Um, I'm just getting this butter all melted and I'm going to be adding no spices. <laughs> I thought I had spices here. Okay, you know what? We'll just do the butter today. No, no, we're not. We're not. Salt and pepper, right here. We're adding our salt and pepper. And I add garlic to it too, but I do have garlic in here. I have garlic in here, so I don't want to do an overkill on garlic. So we're just gonna get this butter melted. And when it's melted, we're gonna start the roux. I have my whisk and I got my flour. So it is a half a cup to a cup of flour. And you're gonna add about a half a, and you're gonna add about a half a tablespoon of salt and pepper. So salt, black pepper. I like to add black pepper for my roux. And then we're just gonna get this melted before we add the flour. Okay, the butter's melted, and now we're gonna add the flour and whisk it till it forms a paste. And then you're gonna let it bubble probably for about maybe one minute, one to two minutes. Okay, that's beautiful. My broth is beautiful. There we go. All right. So I did add another half a cup of flour. I need the whole cup. 
Okay, we're just gonna let uh, it. We're gonna slowly add in the cream. And just keep stirring, it's gonna get thick. So that's about two cups of heavy cream. All right, I want my burner up too high. There we go, now we're gonna slowly add in the broth. There we go. There we go. So mine's not gonna have like a nice, beautiful white color because of um, the drippings that were already in the pan. And if you cook it a little longer too, then it makes it a little darker. It looks beautiful though. All right, so. And you might have some herbs in there, that's okay. So just slowly add it as it's gonna thicken as you stir it. Then we're gonna add back in the chicken, we're gonna add back in the veggies. See, it's whitening up a little bit. Not so dark. So I think I've added like five cups so far. And if you think it's too soupy, then just let it rest. Turn up the heat a little bit and let it rest because as it heats up, it will thicken. As it sits, it will thicken. Just gotta be real patient with it. And I want enough to put into my pan and to saturate like to make sure that the, the roux is all through like my chicken, through my veggies. All right. Mmm, nice. Beautiful, beautiful. We're gonna add in the veggies first. Cause I gotta get those crusts going. You know, it does take a little more time when you make your own crust. All right. Normally I'd have the crust in there ready to go. I'm gonna turn the heat off. It might overflow here, we'll see. <laughs> All right. What do you think? Think I'm gonna make it? Oh yeah. Oh man, might have to stop. Add a little more chicken to the bottom. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so it is way more stiff, a little crumblier than I like, but it is way stiffer, so that's good. So I'm just trying to, the outsides are a little colder than the inside, so I'm just gonna Hold it a little bit, get it kind of, might have to do two maybe, like roll it into twos. All right, let's just get all those pieces in there so it's not so, oh yeah, this is a lot better. Feels a lot better like store-bought stuff. <laughs> okay, so maybe keep the water. Okay, Whew. I really need to get in the weight room. This is ridiculous. Okay, got some flour here. You know, sometimes when you cook and you just feel like everything you do, nothing works. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel right now. All right, this looks beautiful. It does look beautiful. And so I just got the word that I think Haley's dog is having puppies right now. This was for her. So I'm gonna have to take her over some chicken pot pie. See, I just wanna be able to fold it into fours to put it into my pan, and I think it's gonna work. I, 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 so put it in the fridge for 30 minutes. It's perfect. All right, beautiful. Fold out here. It's gonna be kinda of big, so I gotta put it in my pan. Okay. All right. It rolls out beautiful, my only concern is am I going to be able to fold it to put it into my pan that's my only concern but we'll see we'll see all right but I'm not going to give up I'm going to keep trying stuff I'll come up with a different recipe if I have to 
I was exercising last night and I was exercising and I was trying to finish my last couple minutes on my bike. My legs were dead. And um, I put on Rocky. My husband's like, what's that? I said, Rocky Four. And he's about to fight Drago. Draco. Draco. <laughs> he started that posters laughing. when you're a little. Mine had a, uh, mine had the guy from Rocky on it. I loved him. He ain't so cute right now, but he was a cutie patootie back then. All right. We should do a segment on like coffee and gossip or everything you didn't want to know about me, <laughs> but I told you why we were cooking. Okay. The cookbook is coming along. Um, just doing the final touches, getting ready for our photo shoot, getting everything ready to go so we can start presenting the book. Super exciting. Now it's absolutely beautiful. This is so beautiful. I know I say that a lot, but it is. It's rolling out very nice. Now the true test is putting it into my pan. That is the true test. Is it gonna work? Oh man. Well, I have a feeling it's not going to go into my pan. We will see. But you know what, if I have to put it in pieces and I put it in pieces, it's beautiful dough though, holy cow. All right, I think this is good. Okay, oh, we'll see, here we go. Maybe I'll use a spatula to help So me. I need to fold it into fours. I don't know. Please, Jesus, let it work. Nope. Darn it. Okay, so it is not gonna work. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna grab my pan and I'm going to just have to put it in, in sections. It is what it is. Okay, we'll just cut sections and put it into the pan slowly. I'm gonna have to figure out what I did. If any of you guys have a tip, So we'll just press it into the pan. Here we go. It feels really good. Maybe because it's so big, maybe. I'm gonna bring these edges over here. <laughs> you guys are like, yeah, we're on here trying to learn how to cook and she don't know how to cook. <laughs> It, it kind of feels like cookie dough to me. I'm kind of having an issue with it. I haven't made um, a from scratch recipe in a long time. I guess I need to, I need to get back doing it. All right, this is crazy. I don't know, I don't know. But we're gonna make it beautiful. We're gonna make it beautiful. Okay, what a train wreck, hey? What a train wreck. But see, my family doesn't see it. So they'll see the finishing touches. That's beautiful. They won't see this. So I'm just gonna make it so beautiful for them. Yeah, I mean, like it's real soft. It's really nice. I'm thinking maybe in the future, I'm gonna nix the shortening. I think the shortening kind of made it a little soft. So if I would give you a tip, I would say um, maybe not do the shortening, just do the butter. And I might try that too. I might just try and do one with butter. Okay. But I got the size right, so that's good.
Okay. <laughs> this looks so bad. It looks so bad. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. But you know what? How many videos do you see the flops, right? You just see the beautiful, beautiful rendition, but you don't get to see when they do make a mistake. So here you go. Here you go. Okay. Yeah, darn it. <laughs> People would be like, what the heck? <laughs> oh, man. I envision this, like, beautiful crust. But, I mean, it's, it's, once I get it in here, it's nice. Like, when I press it together, it goes together, and it's not as crumbly. So, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. it just doesn't look the best. But sometimes creations that are good don't look the best. All right. <laughs> Be kind in the comments. <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm going to make my... I just have one more to do to put on top. And so I'm just... I think I'm just going to roll it out into pieces, like in smaller sections and then um put it on and then just kind of seal the top i'm thinking the other one i did do a little differently i didn't add as much water i feel like i'm making like a pie pie all right all right i know this is probably torture right you guys are like man enough heather <laughs> I will not give up. I will not give up. All right, there we go. Okay, we got the bottom. And I'm just gonna press the sides. I mean, it is gonna bake together, so I don't know. I think I'm gonna be okay. I'm not gonna be super horrible mad about it. Man. Okay. And then I need a fork. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna prick the bottom. And then now I'm gonna go get the top one so we can get it ready to go when the veggies are in. And I'm gonna preheat my oven to 375. Okay, so I did put all this chicken in here and it didn't overflow. So now we're gonna fill the pie crust and I got the oven heated up. My family's all watching me. They can't talk. <laughs> that looks great. All right, and then I'm gonna attempt to put the top on. Shame. We'll see what happens. Okay. I got a million eyes on me. Haley's been waiting for this. She's over here watching me making sure I'm doing everything right. She's about to be a grandma. <laughs> okay. Let's fill this right to the rim here. Honey, the carrots are done, I promise. Oh, that's the first thing I check. <laughs> I know it is. All right, let's get this in here. All right. Did you tell everybody how I brought you tea this morning? He did. He brought me uh, first a hot water with lemon. Which you rejected. <laughs> and then he brought me a nice tea. Without complaining. Yes. <laughs> Throw me under the bus. My crust did not work, so it looks really bad. I'm going to have to piece it on, unfortunately. I don't know what happened to it. I know. Everybody's looking at me like, what in the world happened? We don't care how it looks. We care how it tastes. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. I just don't understand. 
but I ask for tips. Please give me well, tips uh, on why this looks like a bomb hit it. All right, I gotta do some more crust here and then make it a little nice. This is crazy. All right, so I'm gonna rub some butter on top. I don't need to cut air holes in it because there's lots of air holes in it. Maybe the butter will make it cook together better. See, it's gonna come out looking all mosaic and stuff. It's gonna be like a piece of art. <laughs> okay. All right. Honey. Baby shark, shark, shark. I'm on the Okay, so we're gonna do it with butter. And that actually kind of, honey! Stop it, how you like it? <laughs> Okay, now it's going to go in the oven at 375 for about 20 minutes. And we'll see if the crust works together. Okay, here we go. Actually, doesn't look too bad, does it? Yeah, it looks very bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here is my chicken pot pie. The top does look a little rough, but we're going to try it out. I put butter on it. My husband helped me with how long to put it in the oven. She needed help on this one. I needed help. Okay, so now we're gonna let it set and hopefully see. I tasted the crust, it tasted good, so we'll see how it turns out. I could not end it there because I make a decent crust. I don't know what happened. Crazy, crazy. What I'm thinking of is maybe the shortening was too warm because I looked it up and it said that if your butter or your shortening is warm, it won't allow the gluten. Like it mixes with the flour and it doesn't allow that gluten to make things rise and, and do what they're supposed to do. Um, so I'm gonna do it again. And I'm gonna make an apple pie. Now I'll tell you, the chicken pot pie was amazing. Amazing, the crust was so flaky, too flaky, <laughs> but it was amazing. Like it was like, oh my goodness, it melted in your mouth. Um, the flakiness from the shortening, the butter flavor, like it was really good. Like it was all gone, there was nothing left. It was so amazing. But it just, like you've seen, it wasn't going into it. Like it wasn't folding like it did. I've made crusts forever. And I just, I don't know what I did. I couldn't figure it out. I tried adding more water, tried adding more flour. And I just, I don't know. So I'm not going to let it sit like that. So I'm going to be making a crust for this apple pie. I'm going to figure it out. I will do a video for hours if that's what it takes. I'm going to figure it out. So um, I'm going to grab my flour, my salt. It's basically just flour. I'm not going to mix the shortening and the butter. Um, I'm gonna do just the butter. So it's flour, butter, salt, and cold water. So I'm gonna get all the ingredients together. I'm gonna make myself another crust. These are my canned apple pie filling that I did this summer. And I actually did a couple different ones. And so I have, that's why they all look different, is um, these I had like maybe a little bit more cinnamon in it and the type of apple. So I had transparents and I also had red apples. So depending on what apple you used is how it turns the syrup. So I got a couple different ones. And then these here that I had did, um, I had actually cooked them a little bit too long. So they got a little bit more pulpier, but I want like that pulp with the apples because I feel like it just adds like different textures. So I'm going to mix it, um, but I'm going to figure this out. I cannot leave it alone. I have got to make the, a beautiful crust. So I'm going to do that. We're making a beautiful crust together, like right now. And my family gets a bonus because... They got the chicken pot pie, now they're getting a homemade apple. I'm gonna use my food processor again. So it's two cups of flour. I didn't get my cold water, but I'll get the cold water. Okay, there we go. Make sure you measured it out good. So two cups of flour. And there we go. I'm gonna figure this out, you guys. I'm gonna figure this out. I just don't know what happened and I was so excited to make this wonderful from scratch meal, like from scratch, a quarter scratch. teaspoon of salt. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna pulse it and then slowly add the butter to it. So it's a one half cup of butter. Ah. So we're just gonna pulse it and then just add. I'm just gonna see. So it'd be like you cutting butter by hand with the cutter. I'm just gonna slowly cut the butter in. And it needs to be cold, so I just took it out of the refrigerator. Right. Okay. I'm gonna 
figure it out, I'm telling you. Oops. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. All right. So you're going to pulse it until it's nice and crumbly in there. You don't want to overdo it. Just got my hair done. Had to get those roots done. I feel like as I get older, my hair is getting dark and I don't like it. But then in the summer, my hair is so light. All right. I think that looks good. Now I'm going to add four to five tablespoons of, I have my ice cold water here just until the flour is moistened. So I'm gonna start with one. Actually, I'm gonna put two in there because I know it's gonna be around four. All right. I also have a recipe where you can use just straight shortening. It's pretty similar, except you use a little less flour. But we're gonna try this butter one. All right, I'm gonna add another one. I used to make crusts all the time. No, my life just got busy, so busy. Oh, it's looking good now. See how it's starting to... And it does say to pulse, and last time I was just like... So maybe that's the problem. Okay, it looks like... Let's see how it feels. It's actually really nice. It's soft. I'm gonna add one more because it still is a little crumbly. I'm just kind of thinking my shortening was so warm and I think it just kind of melted everything. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, that looks way better. All right. So I'm surprised everybody with an apple pie. <laughs> I didn't plan on making an apple pie, but I am going to get this right. There we go. Oh, that looks so beautiful. Okay. Let's pull this out. I got to get my little flowered surface going here. Oh, it feels so good. The last one felt good too, so I don't know. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna put it into two because I need a top. I think the top I'm gonna do like a lattice. All right, all right, okay. I hope this works. Please let it work. It feels good, it's staying together. It feels nice. All right, I don't know, I don't know. And then all my family was watching me put the crust together and my husband's like, ah. So I had so much pressure on me. And now it's quiet and nobody's around. So they're all gonna come home to a wonderful, beautiful smell of fresh apple pie. Well, not fresh, fresh, but canned apple pie. But normally I don't use a food processor either. Normally I just use like my cutter. So I don't know if that's it too, but. All right. I don't know, so far it looks kind of flexible. It's not falling apart when I pick it up. That's really good. Put a little more flour down here. This just reminds me of when I made cookies with you guys online or on live and the cookies like fell apart and I was like, what in the world? Well, they didn't fall apart. They were like flat as pancakes. Do y'all remember that? And I'm like, okay, I'm not leaving this live until I make more. And so I did. All right. Looks good. I think I'm just so used to, because I haven't been making my own. And this was so easy. Like we did this in five minutes. And I think I'm so used to the ones in the containers and how pliable they are. And I, oh, sometimes convenience isn't always better, right? All right, this looks good. Make it a little thinner because it is going to rise. But no, my um, chicken pot pie was amazing. Like, it was amazing. But I do get nervous when my family starts watching me. I do get a little nervous. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. 
I don't know. I don't know what happened there. This is so beautiful. All right. I got a little bit over the edge because I'm gonna make like a lattice on top of it. So I probably could have rolled it out a little bit more, but, and then you're just gonna wanna cut it. Um, I don't have a cutter, so we'll just use this. Just do a little bit of air holes in the bottom. There you go. Okay. All right, that looks great. And I'm gonna have a little bit of a, a crust. Okay, now I'm gonna roll the other one up. I'm gonna put my apples inside my pie shell. I'm gonna get my oven preheated to 375. And um, I don't know, look it, it worked. I don't know. I got the apples in the pie. I put a little bit of pumpkin pie spice on top. It's, it's sweet already because I had added, made a simple syrup, um, but I didn't add like the cinnamon and stuff. So I have my shell rolled out here. I'm just gonna cut it into lines. This is, I'm so glad this worked out. And then I also melted some butter to put on top. So I'm gonna do like a lattice on top of it. I might have gotten it a little too long, but let me cut off these edges here. All right. Yeah, this is a bonus for my family. Seems how I uh, couldn't figure out how to do my pie, my crust for my for my chicken pot pie, and now look, beautiful. I wish they'd done this when all my family was staring at me, but no. but I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna give up. I'm not, whatever that song is, I don't know. Okay, this one is nice. It's stretching. It doesn't break when I touch it like the other one. I am so thankful. I could even stop thinking. I've been thinking about it all weekend. Like what happened with my crust? And I'm like, I am not gonna leave it like that. And then I'm like, yeah, you put a thing on and for people to like use your recipe and your your crust was crap. <laughs> Redemption! Redemption! But you know, I was talking to Haley. She's like, you know what, Mom? But that's life, right? Like sometimes you cook and it's not beautiful like you want it. And other people cook and it's not beautiful like they want it. So it's just like realistic. I'm like, yeah, that's true, I guess. I can ask. All right. So now we're going to do a little work here on this pot. There we go. I might have a little longer pieces, but that's okay. Okay, so this one's gonna have to go on the end. And this one is not staying together. This can go on the end too. There we go. I might have to cut some of these a little bit, they're a little long. There we go. All right, there we go. And you can weave it through if you want. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna lay them on the line. Some of these I might have to piece together. We'll see how it goes. But once it cooks, it'll be nice. Once it cooks, it'll it'll all kind of flow together. Oh, there, I mean, I almost did it perfect. Look at that. And then this one can go here, and that one can go there. Look at that, how cute is that? And I think what I'll do is I'll add some of this on the outside of it maybe, just to kind of seal it. And then I'll create like a really pretty like lattice on the outside. I'll just make sure it's all pinched together. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. All right. <laughs> I kind of need to work on my baking skills a little bit, I think. <laughs> it's definitely not like cookbook picture worthy. <laughs> Then I'm not wasting any dough either. We're using it all up. We can make a cute little, all right. Let me squish it all together. I mean, I can make a mean casserole, but when it comes to baking, I need to work on it. But I've been making my family's their own cakes for their birthday. 
I've been trying from scratch stuff. I got so many ideas in my head. I wish I could just get to them all. All right, did I bring it all up? Okay, now we're just gonna create that beautiful edging. There's so many different things you can do. You can use a fork. You can use your fingers like I'm doing. And then as you kind of play with it with your fingers, it kind of helps the crust be together. I'm gonna swish it with a little bit of butter. Yeah, see, look at that. How cute is that? Just pinch it all together. I don't know where I left off. Oh, I think this is where I left off. Oh no, I gotta keep going here. There we go, okay. That don't look too bad, hey? And it worked. Oh, it worked. Okay, butter. I'm just gonna put a little butter on these. A little bit of butter into the apples. I'm gonna have to message my kids and tell them to bring home some vanilla ice cream. Ooh. All right, so we're gonna wanna just dab it. Okay. You can also use an egg wash if you want. Just do egg whites. That would make it nice and crispy and it'd make it nice and brown on top. All right, let's get the edges. And I gotta show you guys, I picked up these super cool things from Pampered Chef. And I'm gonna show you guys. So there's these rings and you just set them on wherever my handles are. Where this one doesn't have handles. You just set it, oh, this one might be a little big. So with normal pans, you just set it on and it covers it. But my pan's a little big, so I'm gonna have to probably use tin foil. I don't know, maybe I'll just do this. Cause it just keeps the heat from hitting those edges that brown really fast. Um, so yeah, now it's time to heat up, or now it's time to cook 375. But the important thing is, I figured out the crust. So now I feel comfortable enough sharing with you the recipe. That's the Hey, so my pie just came out of the oven. It looks amazing. The crust worked? I don't know. I'm glad I fixed it. I'll make sure to put this in the comments. But all right, well, I didn't give up and it worked. My family now gets an apple pie because I had to prove to myself I could make this crust. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm making the chicken pot pie a couple days ago, the apple pie today. I will leave all of the directions in, or the ingredients and directions in the comments, or not the comments, the description, oh my goodness. I need some coffee, but thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and like to Just the Bells 10. And I'm back to wedding. Going to the chapel and Haley's getting married.